Early in the course, we talked about transforms, position, rotation, and scale. And I warned you against using the scale tool on objects. And the reason is that if you non-uniformly scale an object, if you stretch it in different directions and change its shape, and then link that object to another object, then you're going to have some strange skewing artifacts that occur because of the inheritance of that non-uniform scale. Here I've got a situation where I've got a chest that's squashed down and needs to be stretched upward. I'm going to show you the issue, and then I'll show you how to avoid the issue, and I'll show you how to correct the issue if it occurs. I'll select that chest object, and then choose the scale tool, and then I want to stretch it up in Z. Just click on the Z axis of the scale tool, and stretch that up. And I can do it really precisely if I want. I can right click on the scale tool and give it an absolute Z scale of 200%, just for precision's sake. All right, cool. I've created a non-uniformly scaled object. Now I'm gonna link the head to the chest. Grab the Select and Link tool, click on the head, and drag over to the chest and release. Now the link's been created, and let's see what happens if we try to rotate that head. Grab the Rotate tool, and rotate it in X and immediately see that there's a real issue. It's being stretched in some strange manner. I'll undo that with Control Z. So the non-uniform scaling of the chest is being inherited by the head. And because of the internal order of operations with position, rotation, and scale being calculated in that order, the object's being scaled after it's being rotated. And that's why this issue is occurring. Additionally, there's a kind of strange thing that happened behind the scenes. It's an automatic adjustment to the scale of the child. Our chest was scaled up in Z to 200%. And then when we linked the head, we actually probably should have seen the head stretch as well because scale is inherited. But 3ds Max and other programs also work the same way. 3ds Max has gone behind our backs and actually inverted the scale of the child to preserve its shape. We can examine that. With that head selective, we go to the scale tool. We can see that it's got a Z scale of 50%. So we scaled this one up by 200%, and then we created the link, and 3ds Max attempted to preserve the shape of the child. To do that, it had to apply an inverse scale effect. Now, even if we set this to 100%, that still doesn't solve our problem. We'll still see the issue if we rotate. It's still tweaking and skewing in weird directions. And again, that's because the object is being rotated first and then scaled. All right, so that's the problem that we need to avoid. I'm gonna undo all those operations with Control-Z and get us back to before we did the scale operation. If you want, you can just reopen the scene file if you've got it. Let's look at how to do this to avoid the problem in the first place. Really, your best practice, if possible, is to scale the object at the sub-object level or component level. To do that, I'll select the object, go over to the Modify panel, and I want to select all of its polygons or elements. It really doesn't matter which. I can select by element and then just drag a rectangle. I've selected all the polygons. And then I want to scale, but if I do it now, and scale, you can see that it's scaling each one of those elements individually. Let me undo that. I just wanna change my transform center up here to selection center. And now when I scale in Z, it's operating the way I want it to. Now I don't have the ability to precisely scale it with this method here. So I'm gonna undo that. And once again, we'll go back into the transform type in dialog, right click there. And you'll notice that we have no control over the individual axes here. And that's because we're using the select and uniform scale variant. Kind of weird, but if we go up here to this flyout and hold it down, choose the second one in the list, that's select and non-uniform scale. Once we do that, now these values are all exposed and I can set that Z value to 200 and press enter. Notice that it snapped back to 100 as soon as I did that because this is not an actual transform scale. We're scaling all of the parts of the object 
sort of inside or interior to the object. Okay, and then of course we would want to position it correctly as well. All right, that's how you can avoid the issue because now if I exit out of subobject mode and look at the absolute scale values, go up to the scale tool once again, it's reading out as 100, 100, 100. There's no issue here. It's not non-uniformly scaled. And then I can go ahead and create my link. Link the head to the chest. Grab the rotate tool, select that head and rotate it, and no issues occur. Okay, that's how to avoid the issue entirely. Let's look at how you can correct the issue if it occurs. Once again, I'll undo and go back to the state before we did any scaling. And let's do it the wrong way and then correct the wrong way. Okay, I'll select the scale tool and then scale it up. And in fact, I could do it numerically if I want. I could right click and give it 200% scale. And before I do any links now, what I wanna do is reset the scale. You can see it down here as well. We've got a scale X of 100, scale Y of 100, scale Z of 200. What we'd like to do is to reset the scale so that the object preserves its current shape, but has scale values of 100% in all three axes. And there is a utility to accomplish that. And in our command panel, go over to the rightmost of those command panels. It's a little wrench icon labeled utilities. Click on that. And we have lots of utilities. These are just the most common ones. And the one that we want here is reset X form. What this does is it adds a modifier to the stack. That modifier is called X form. In engineer speak, X is an abbreviation for trans. X form therefore means transform. And what X form does is it allows you to move, rotate, and scale an object inside its modifier stack. When you do that, you're not affecting the object transforms. Therefore, you're not affecting the hierarchy. And what reset X form does is create an X form modifier with the values required to give an end result of a scale of 100% in all axes. This is our ace in the hole. If we have an issue with non-uniform scaling, we could just go over to this utility, click on reset X form and watch what happens down here. Reset selected. Boom. Look at what's happened down here. We have X, Y, and Z values of 100. Go back to the modify panel, and we have an X form modifier here. And we could use the X form modifier in lots of different ways to achieve different effects. All it's doing here is restoring the object transforms to 100. If we wanted to use this to, for example, stretch the object, we could go into gizmo subobject mode. And now we've got a box around the object. And I could scale this up and down and do stuff to it. That's affecting the shape of the object. It is not affecting the object transforms, therefore not affecting the hierarchy. All right, cool. So I'll undo that. Okay, so the last thing I would want to do actually here is to collapse the modifier stack because I don't really need this X form hanging around. I can exit out of subobject mode and then right click and convert the object to editable poly once again. That's going to bake the X form modifier in. And now we're left with an object that's been stretched. Its transforms have been reset with the X form modifier that restored its transforms to 100 in all axes. Then I converted to editable poly, baking that X form in, and we are good to go now. Okay, so I can create my link, grab the rotate tool, and the head doesn't do any weird skewing anymore. Okay, so in review, to avoid the issue, make sure that your scale is uniform in all three axes, ideally 100% in all axes. To avoid the problem in the first place, scale all of the polygons rather than scaling at the object level. And then if the problem does occur, use the reset X form utility and then convert the object to editable poly to make that permanent. That's how you avoid problems with scale. That's how you correct problems with scale. And that's a really important thing to know when working with hierarchies, because you certainly don't want your children to spin around skewing and distorting in weird ways. All right, cool. So that wraps up our chapter on hierarchies.